It's Anna Mate here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic, and this time we're going to talk about how to find our mean for from the raw data. So let's say you are done with collecting all the data that that you need, and you wanted to start analyzing your gutter data. And how do we start and go about it? So this is how you do it after all the cleaning up, after all the coding, and after you finalize everything that you wanted to do or to analyze with, you are going to start off with getting their means. So for this one, we have here the level of writing. We have different statements here. We've coded that one under LW1 that's level of writing one. That's the first statement under uh, the instrument that they've used. And then we have the level of writing two, level of writing three, level of writing four, and so on, and to level of writing 13. We have the respondents here, which we also coded. We have respondents one up to respondents 104. So this is 104, this is uh, the data also, or the data that we've used on the previous videos in which I've showed there how to do the demographic profiling. You can also check that out if you want to. So this time, since we're done with the coding and the cleaning up of our data, all we have to do is to find the mean for each of the responses of the respondents. We also find the mean of each of the statement on your instrument because this will be based or this will be dependent on whatever you state that on your problem uh, this will be merely based on that one whether you will be using or utilizing responses of the respondents or the mean of each of the response of the respondents or the mean of each of the statement in your instrument so it's gonna be dependent on the statement of the problem so this time we are going to learn how to find the mean of each of the responses of the respondent and the mean of each statement in your instrument so let's start how to find our mean so we simply click equal and then we do the average you can type in on your cell the average, or you can have the AVE there. You will be directed to an options in which you will be choosing average. So click on that one, double click, and then you will be highlighting as to where is the beginning of the one that you're getting the average with. So we started with this one up to LW13. Once you're done, you are going to click on the close or the parenthesis there and then enter. So that is how you get the mean per respondent or uh, responses on the responses per respondents. So the next one, since we wanted that this B2 and N2 will be moving it down as well. So we can just simply drag it down. We do not need to add a dollar symbol before that one because a dollar symbol before the letter and in between the number would somehow freeze our um, our name of the cell in there or how do you call that one um, location of the cell there in so we do not need to freeze that one so all you just have to do is the so once you've got the average there drop I mean drag it down until where you have the final data. So there you go. That will be our mean. So that is how you get your mean on the responses per respondent. Now let's go over to getting the mean as well per questions or per statement on your instrument. So again, we do the same thing. We have equal and then we can type AVE and then look for the average double click that one then you try to highlight the beginning until the end of your data that they wanted to get an average with so we have here 
until this and then you close that one with a parenthesis and then click enter and that will be our mean on that statement if you wanted to get the entire or each of the remaining statement you just have to simply drag this one to your side to your right side until we have the LW13 so this is the last one and then that will be our mean now next one we are going to simply have our levels here or the description now, once you are working on with a Likert scale, this is actually a Likert scale, by the way, we will be having here, since our SOP on this particular data, we have that one as the level of writing, so that is why we're writing here the level. Now, some of you might be going for a description on that one, that's really fine, it's the same thing. Now, since this is a Likert scale, we have different uh, ranges of our values here which will be assigned to a description so we have here from 1 to 1.74 that is not proficient and 1.75 to 2.49 that will be less proficient and then 2.50 to 3.24 that will be proficient and 3.25 to 4 that will be very proficient and then we are going to get the lower limit here. Lower limit refers to the lower value on that particular mean range. This is actually the mean range here. So the lower limit will be 1. So we're writing here the lower limit. And then we have the 1.75 as a lower limit on that one. And then the 2.5 or the 2.50 as a lower limit of that. And then we have the 3.25 as a lower limit of that range. Now, why do we need to get the lower limit? Because we'll be utilizing that one later on. Once we try to assign the description here or the level here on or based on our mean. So how do we do that one? Actually, you can just simply look at the mean there and then check on the range and then know. Just like on the first one, this is 3.54. So most likely, this is located on the uh, 3.25 to 4 as a range. And that is very proficient. Now, let's try to check if that is really pr very proficient. How to do it? Because if you try to... Uh, do the same thing on all of the data there on all of the respondents there then that will be taking up a lot of your time so to make it short or to have a shortcut on that one we can just simply have our formula click on the cell and write equal and then uh, try to type in the VLOOKUP so this is the VLOOKUP click double click on that we have the lookup value we we wanted to uh, look up this value here, the 3.54. We wanted to check our mean range there as to where it belongs to and what will be the corresponding description. So we, write, we click on the 3.54. Then we have a comma. And then next one is the table RE. The ta table RE is where you got your description including the lower limit. This is our basis the guide as to how we try to take the 3.54 as what will be the level, the level or the description. So we try to click on this entirely on the lower limit and the description without including the header in there. So clicking on that, that will be our table array in which we are going to refer to that particular value and description for this 3.54 next we have the comma then next we have the call uh, underscore index underscore num meaning we are going to write down in which particular uh, column are we going to base our result on the 3.54 whether it's going to be on the lower limit or the description if you wanted to have the lower limit then call one if you don't want the lower limit then go for the description but since this is 
going to be the level or the description. So we'll be calling on the second column. So that will be a 2, comma, and then we have the range look up. Now, the range look up there, we have there only 2. True for the approximate match, meaning the values in the first column of table are must be sorted in ascending order. Ascending order meaning we started from lowest to uh, greatest. False if we have, uh, we will only find an exact match, meaning we are going to look for the 3.25 exactly and then the 2.5, but we don't want that one. We need only the approximate match because the values there on the mean are not exactly what is on the lower limit. So let's try to click that one and then close that with a parenthesis and enter. There you go. We have that correctly. That is very proficient. Now, we are going to repeat the process for the entire thing until we go to the last respondent. But this time, if we try to drag it down, notice the changes here. If we are trying to drag it down, you are also moving this but notice on the table already here it also moved one uh, cell down so we don't want to move our table array so we will be going back let's try to delete the second one let's try to freeze the table array here freezing the table array would mean we insert the dollar symbol before the letter and before the number we also do the same thing on the other one dollar symbol before the letter and before the number and click enter now there's no changes at all in the first one because that's really fine now dragging it down we have that one as proficient although on the the result a while ago it's still proficient but there will come a time that there will be an incorrect one once we move very further down because the table of array there will also be moving down so that is why we need to freeze that one so let's try to drag it down to have all the level or the description for every respondent so there you go we have now done the level or the description per respondent now let's go over to per questions. So again, we have here the mean of each of the question. We need to do the VLOOKUP again because we wanted to have the, um, by the way, this is the, the standard deviation. So if you wanted to do the standard deviation, by the way, sorry on that, we can have the standard deviation by simply having it uh, equal or click on the, the cell have it equal symbol and then you try to write the formula for the standard deviation we have that as std ev so if you try to look at this this one here may not be working because i think it's going to be dependent on the the version there but if you try to click on that one it's really fine it will be just giving off the same value it will never be uh, any problem at all so try clicking on the range that you wanted to get the standard deviation with and then click on or enter parenthesis and then enter. So that will be the standard deviation of that statement one. Okay, so let's go for the, the, the remaining uh, statement. We also get the standard deviation of that one. So we just have to simply click that or drag that one to the right and then there you go with the standard deviation so let's now move over to if you wanted to have this um, uh, taken with uh, the level as well we could just simply transfer that one here so let me just copy this and then I'll be copying this one and pasting it down there as values because if you try to paste it down later on to another place, these values will be changing. So if you notice, this one now is not anymore into two decimal places. You can simply adjust that one. You can decrease the decimal into two decimal places. 
and then right from there we can just simply copy this and I wanted to put that here on the table that I prepared in which I'm going to have it vertically from the horizontal uh, orientation I'll be having that one as vertical you can just simply do the pasting with the command transpose so we can have here transpose so from horizontal we go for the vertical so that is pasting using transpose so let me just fix the bottom part there you go and then the indicator here is the learning uh, and not the learning, but the level of writing one. In your report later on for the table, you can, you may not write the code there. You write the indicator or the statement for each of that one. Because we're only using here the code because we don't have, have a copy of the statement. But once you do the reporting and you wanted to have the statement, or you already have the statement there, do the statement. Let me just type it in. So we have until 13. So we have LW9, LW10, LW11, LW12, and LW13. So we're done with that one on the indicator. Let's go for the description. So again, what we did on the level there is the same thing as what we're doing on the description. So we just have to do the VLOOKUP. So equal symbol and then we have the VLOOKUP, double click. And then what we're looking up for is the mean. And then the table of RA is going to be this one again. And then we have comma, and then we have our uh, column that is two, and then we have the true, the approximate match, and then close. But before we close that one, we wanted to freeze the table RA. Uh, we have here the dollar symbol before the letter, before the number, before the letter, and before the number, and then enter. And then we also have to drag it down so that we can have our description there for each of the statement or the indicators and then there you go we have now our uh, report table on level of writing skills of the respondents we have level writing level of writing one we have that one as proficient level of writing two we have that as proficient and so on so that is how you are going to do your uh, reporting on the gathered data that you've got on the Likert scheme. Once again, this is your teacher Jenny. Always do practice and time will tell. You'll get eventually a perfect one.